for kind of studies has to have its own methodology, its own disciplinary language. And what we've been doing for the last couple of years right here and what we're just beginning to do. And I hear now we hear the language echoing everywhere. You know, this, this a, a, a kind of basic set of questions, which then open up into the universe of possibilities. Those six basic questions, uh, an Africana States framework, and this isn't the only Africana States framework. This one draws on all the others, but uh, the question of who are Africans to other people, social structure. I think very much the Harvard uh, legacy of slavery report, film, conference, uh, related documents, all of the stuff, the, the, the pledge of $100 million from Harvard's $52 billion dollar uh and at least that's their endowment i mean i don't even say their resources it's much greater than that in terms of resources uh so 100 million dollars is a lot of money till you look back and realize how much money harvard has and makes but the all of that is social structure who are africans to other people brilliant insightful analysis critiques but ultimately resolving itself into a structure that is part of a social structure and a structure that prides itself on being a leader in training future generations to continue to manage this social structure, albeit with some adjustments. Maybe you can call them reform, certainly not revolution or anything like that. But at any rate, that first African states question is the social structure question. Who are Africans other people? The second question, which is really the question, but in order to get to this second question, we have to uh, at least acknowledge the first question, because in acknowledging and establishing that first question, that social structure question, we are engaged in a very important step, not the destination, but a preliminary step. Because as you say, Larry, we live in a society that orders our steps, that orders our lives, regardless of how we move through the world as individuals, as communities, as collectives, we are still in a structure that we didn't we don't control that that relies on us to maintain itself. But in order to maintain itself in a certain way, in terms of a kind of asymmetrical relationship, hierarchical relationship, many ways, oppressive relationship, lethal relationship for us. Right. It it requires a certain type of invisibility. So that first question, who are Africans to other people? Forces us to grapple and it to grapple with whiteness, but it doesn't become the it doesn't become the. The purpose of our work and then the only other thing i'll say right quick of those other six categories um ways of knowing how do african people look at the world and the universe science technology what are we using to uh, what do we use for our purposes what do we adapt what do we create uh movement and memory as we go through the, uh, our lives and go on through generation to generation how do we remember certain moments in our collective experiences cultural meaning making what art music culture do we create in any specific time to mark our place there all of those categories empty into the second question which is the governance question who are we to each other and that is the question that is not and should not be and really cannot be at in the harvard report because harvard isn't ours watching the film and all these uh black scholars black celebrities black public intellectuals saying we how do we grapple with the leg our legacy at harvard how do we and i'm just laughing. who is we why y'all keep saying we are y'all working harvard well not only that you have something at harvard you want anyway but let me pause there because you came back and jump in please so, <laughs> explore this brother Ka, i have so many questions right now. Oh, oh. how karen does this where she can talk with you and not just pepper you with the questions and i committed to myself oh. and to nubia i would not do this but i just gotta sit right here because you said that first question who are we to others who are African people to other people? You said that is not the destination. Uh, that's just a, a, a buy stop on the journey. But one of the things that I'm beginning to wrestle with is this concept that beca perhaps because of the way the injury has been perpetuated, for mm -hmm. a lot of us, part of the sickness of internalized white supremacy, whatever label we want to put on it, is seeing that first question, who are we to other people as the destination? Yeah. And literally fashioning our entire culture, our survival mechanisms, what we pride, what we value, what we train our children to value and to seek after is all to make that first question, who are we to other people to fit within and to squeeze and manipulate and contort ourselves, our body, our culture, our minds into making that the destination. Who are we to other people and how do we become more palatable to other people? Because in doing that, part of the sickness causes some of us to believe that that is a source of, of power. 
of sí. being able to repair ourselves in the eyes of other people. And that becomes sort of the, as my sister would say, the sun and bottom that becomes our, our soul, <laughs> yes. our soul effort. Our soul Teach. goal is to make ourselves more palatable and acceptable to other people, forgetting that there's five other questions that we need right. to consider that would fill out our framework so much so that that first question, which it sounds like is the one question that Harvard was asking, okay. right? And I, and I put this in the private chat. I hate it to quibble with a hundred million dollars, but seriously, Harvard, really a hundred million dollars. We and know it ain't like you it. No question. You're not going to get it's Harvard's money. It's going to stay at Harvard. Right. Right. So that, how do we, and, and as we're thinking about what reparations look like, and again, going back to attorney uh, Nikichi Taifa's uh, question or statement that we determine what the repair is and what that repair looks like. If so much, many of us are stuck trying to answer that question as if resolving that question would indeed resolve our issues as a community, what are the pathways for us making sure that we realize, no, y'all, this is just question number one, and this ain't even necessarily the most important question? Don't go, don't go anywhere. Because, I mean, like I said, we, we, this is a conversation. We always have conversations. So we got I'm, I'm loving this. And thank you, because you you're peeling this back um when we came up with that african states framework they're really the the two questions well there's really only one question the one question is governance who are we to each other those the four the 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 the, the, the categories after that all feed the governance question so when we say who are we to each other the question is what are our ways of knowing in the world what are the different ways we understand the world and how do we discuss, debate wherever we are in the world and throughout history and time and now? The science technology is the same thing. How do we use, so we think about the birth of hip hop, we're using turntables, we're talking about speakers out of the crib, whatever. That's all science technology, you know, the inventors, all that stuff. The uh, movement and memory, key. How as we move through time and space do we create these markers that allow us to have a we that doesn't begin with our birth and end with our death? So the place that you work, and I say this every time I'm on that campus, it really, it does something to me to walk into an auditorium and see a picture of Mega Wiley Evers and then know that this place came into existence because at, when you, you can't go to Mega Evers College and not be in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right. Ocean Hill, Brownsville, Bobby J. Right. where you see the East, all this is Brooklyn, oh. Evers Field right down the street. I mean, this is movement and memory. And then when you see young people or old people, anybody walking through that space who don't know that, we have failed. <laughs> education is part of movement and memory. You shouldn't walk into a place. And so Harvard is doing what Harvard needs to do for its movement and memory. But its movement and memory isn't connected to the governance structure. It's connected to the social structure. And this is why we, we created that curriculum uh, framework out of a high school class that we have in Philadelphia, the mandatory African-American States high school class they have, history high school, not even African-American States. But what we came in with, we can't create just a Me Too history class. And this is Africana studies, it's not history. So we had debates for a whole summer, just debating, and I'm sitting there listening, you know, I throw a question out, or somebody throw a question out, we argue, and meanwhile, you're not talking now, because I'm sitting here thinking, how are we gonna reconcile it? And I'll never forget the day we arrived at that social structure question. We were debating, and I, you know, we've, we've had this conversation before, but I'll just say it very quickly. Um, we were debating some, actually, oh man, I thought I just, there's a new book that came out. Oh, I don't uh, put it somewhere. I just got it. It's called The Book of Negroes. This whole, well, you know, you, 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 and you know it. A lot of people know that book after the so-called Revolutionary War, the British are meeting in New York with the Continental Congress Army. And they have promised all these Africans, that if y'all fight for us, we're going to free y'all. Of course, they reneged on a whole bunch of it because they are re-niggers. But at, at any rate, they sent some of them to uh, Sierra Leone. They took some of them to Caribbean, re-enslaved them. Some of them they did take to Canada. But they had this ledger where they had the names of these African people, their occupations. And these were the people they're going to take with them, so-called Book of Negroes, the Book of Negroes. And I think Lawrence Hill wrote a book called Somebody Knows My Name, kind of a fictional account. Uh, BT once did a mini series on it, you know, the sister. With Ellis. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. From Mississippi. Yes. Yeah. yes. So, so, you, you know, right? so we're having this debate about the Book of Negroes. And one brother, Daoud Malik Watts, my dear brother, great historian. I mean, just he's sitting there arguing. We got to do the Book of Negroes. About it. And then. And part of the argument, somebody said, I forget who said this, it's like, why do we care who them people thought we were? And then 
So after that day, I'll never forget. I went over, I went somewhere else in Philly. I'm waiting for that drove, and I just started saying, okay, now how are we going to get? Because what we knew was any course at any university, at any high school, any K-12 that's dealing with us is going to probably follow the same framework that every conversation with us starts with. Well, they were in Africa. Then slavery, slavery, slavery. Okay, Civil War, emancipation, blah, 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 great migration, blah, 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 civil rights, blah, Barack Obama. Okay, let's go. Wait. That ain't got nothing to do with it. That's what we had to do in the space we found ourselves. So the, so the question then, because the Book of Negroes was key to this, we said, okay, it's got their names, right? So if it's got their names, do we know their stories? Well, we do know someone thinking about, okay, so who are they to each other? Uh, how do we get high school students to ask, okay, we know the names, we know where they went, but now what did they do with each other? Okay, because that ledger is who they are to other people. There it is. And once we got that, we realized nobody really cares what other people think about them. Certainly black people don't care. We only care because we have to survive it. But who we are when y'all not looking is a different conversation. And don't come over here if we didn't invite you. Don't come for us because we are in this space. Anyway, I still like to say this. As you ask that question, All human societies have social structures. The reason we came up with a social structure category was that the social structures that predate the invasions of Africa were African social structures. Within those African social structures, you have governance structures, but those governance structures are now tied to who your blood family is, who the people in your village are. who the, And so there's a social structure and a governance structure question to be had, completely independent of this. But once enslavement starts, you start sucking people in, we no longer control those social structures. This is why as we're reading Barracoon this month, and now next week and the week after we finish, what we see, Kasula, uh, is doing coming out of in, out of Africa? He's describing these African social structures, these African social structures that he got pulled into. And and, and shout out to Adesoje for those of you who are not in Nubia. If you're not yet in Nubia, this will be you know as you all know we are engaging in a month long read of Barracoon, which of course is the book that is based on the. Uh, testimony of this brother right here, Kostula, uh Kujo, so-called Kujo Lewis, um, who was 19 years old when he was taken from Africa. He and some of his family and a lot of different people he did not know, taken out of the port at Wida, one of the largest ports for the trade of human human beings in Africa at the time. And I say shout out to our brother, our, our Yoruba brother, who is uh, in London. Um, Adesuje, who came in on Monday and helped us puzzle through some of the language in this text as it relates to this brother, beginning with his name, Kosla. And he, I raise that because when you ask, you know, that question about social structure and governance structure, he is, he has his own governance structure. He spends a great deal of his talk with Zora Neale Hurston talking about his governance in his village, in his family his rites of passage, his ways of knowing that come out, the, his use of science and technology, how they use his movement and memory. When